Hey there, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Hit subscribe if you're new because you are about to be in for a wealth of wild videos as we trek around the wintry Rocky Mountains with our newly installed Cubic Mini Wood Stove. We worked on the install of this wood stove in the garage of our friends Jillian and Dave's house, with Dave as the master craftsman and Jill as the humble maker of teas and meals. Endless and forever thanks to them both for the continued love and generosity. We love you guys so much. The pieces we received from Cubic Mini for this install were a three inch double walled pipe, the cute little stove itself, the tiny little stove tools, and the metal back pieces to protect the walls from heat. For this build, we were following the guidance of Tim Miklos, another fiberglass trailer owner who has installed a cubic mini wood stove inside of his bowler. He was the person who made us realize that this was all possible. So thanks, Tim. The first task was to build an extension onto our countertop for the wood stove to sit on. Our handyman, Dave, measured the corner area of the scamp and cut a piece of plywood to fit. The jigsaw he's using here was passed down to him from his grandpa. The counter extension was held up by a wooden notch screwed into the side of the fiberglass countertop, as well as two metal pipes that Dave had to file down in order to make the countertop extension level. He attached two metal pieces of pipe fitting to the fiberglass bench for the pipes to thread into, and we already had two pieces of pipe fitting attached to the bench that used to hold up the bunk bed, so we took those off and attached those to the underside of the counter extension to hold the tops of the metal poles in place. Oh my god. Oh, that's amazing! That's gonna be so amazing. Dave then cut a piece of sheet metal to sit on top of the wood extension. He glued the sheet metal to the wood piece, then bolted it on using bolts that match our existing countertop. I'm still amazed by how well the entire thing matches. He curved the extra metal around the front of the wood piece and secured that down using a bunch of flat washers. The next plan of action was cutting the hole in the roof. To make the hole in the flattest place on the roof while staying safely away from any combustibles inside the scamp, we pushed the stove as far forward to the front of the countertop extension as possible. The hole still wasn't on a completely flat part of the scamp, but the entire scamp is rounded to some extent, so that was gonna be impossible. Dave drilled the first hole from the outside of the scamp using a one inch bit. From the inside, I used a compass to make a perfect circle and cut out that circle fabric. We make up more of this fabric off in the near future and apply a piece of sheet metal around the whole opening to prevent a fire. We then began the full cutting of the circle. Dave was the first person to ever sit on top of the scamp. Congratulations, Dave. You'll probably be the last person to ever sit on the scamp. He used a sawzall to cut the slices from the center to the outside ring of the circle, then cut off all the slices. I cried a little bit during this part, but he did a perfect job. We then took the stove outside to burn off all the chemicals from the paint. Right. Cubic Mini suggests burning for at least an hour and says it'll take 20 to 30 hours to fully remove all chemicals. Ew. We also wanted to see how hot we could get the stove in stove pipe. 500 degrees was the hottest we were able to get the stove and the stove pipe was only slightly too hot to touch. Once the stove cooled, we attached the back plate. The original holes in the back plate are positioned for a stove being attached to a wall and sitting on top of a drawer piece that the stove came with. We didn't use that little drawer in our build, making our stove sit an inch lower than the holes provided. Dave drilled new holes in the back plate so that both the stove and the back plate could sit flush on the countertop. We removed the metal rails from the top of the stove in order to have an easier time cooking on the stove, though Cubic Mini may not recommend this. Next, Dave drilled some holes in the countertop extension where the stove feet attach. Every time we drive, the stove will need to be removed for safety, so we've attached the screws with wing nuts to make that process easier. We put on the first piece of three inch piping, and as a heat barrier, are using a five inch pipe around that, and both of those go up into the rubber boot. The rubber boot is what sits on top of the scamp, sealing the pipe and protecting from leaks. Cubic Mini recommended this ductite heat rated rubber boot for our build. It's rated to 400 degrees and the stove pipe should never reach that temperature. We used a high heat rating silicone on the underside of the boot and bolted that with screws every inch or so. Baron kind of just bolted it wherever it was needed. We are just about to leave Jill and Dave's. The scamp stove install is not quite finished. I guess our last piece of piping is stuck in Canada. So we are heading out into the mountains anyway, hoping that that pipe comes this week so that we can use our stove. 
If you guys have any questions or any constructive and kind advice, please leave that in the comments below. We would love to hear what you have to say. If you want to see the stove in action, please be sure to stay tuned for future videos. And until then, I will see you in the next one. Bye.